After you and your fellow exiles secured victory over the dissidents, you find the lone minstrel tending to one of your own. Bertrude seems to be unwell, although you cannot yet sense why. How are you feeling, madam? We are terribly wary. We fear that we have taken ill somehow, for our strength not easily suppressed. I see. Then please do not exert yourself or try. The lone minstrel motions for you to come closer. Reader, Bertrude appeared rather disoriented and more fatigued than usual. Reported feeling not entirely present. Symptoms of banishment sickness. She should soon be able to take part in light activities, I think, but under no circumstances shall she be able to conduct the coming rite. Now then, I ought not keep you from the stars above. Please, go and have a look at them, for all of us, I think, are anxious to depart this place. The stars yet shine for you, revealing various paths forward. Okay, what are we up against? At Haub, we are up against the Pyre Hearts, which we have beaten before easily. Enoris, over Dalbert again. And Triesta, Lendl. I think it would be good to meet the Pyre Hearts again. They haven't been doing so well, though they did just pick up a victory, it seems like. Let's give it a go. Is this night to understand that we shall soon confront a deluge and the pyre hearts once more? Then this is to be a most exciting time. This night's one-time commanding officer. Imagine, if you will, a worm without the slightest trace of bravery. Sir Gilman then recounts his tale of Sir Deluge's past, and how it is that they wound up together on the downside. Sir Deluge, a worm knight of the Sea Dominion, and former ally of Sir Gilman. He lacks the sort of courage for which his kind is known, yet somehow leads the pyre hearts anyway. Some worms born under the Sea Dominion's waters sought life's meaning on dry land. The Commonwealth recognized their chivalrous traditions and soon put them to use. So Deluge was just another bit of frontline fodder in the war against the Highwing Remnants. Yet time and again he distinguished himself for one simple reason. He would not die. His unusual instinct for self-preservation kept him safe in many battles. And over time he was repeatedly promoted for lack of any real competition. Then, in the Battle of the Spiral Sanctum, when retreat was certainly not an option, Sir Deluge retreated anyway. This was a breaking point, and he at last was sentenced into exile. In the downside, he sought water, where he made contact with Sir Gilman and other members of his kind. They all saluted him as their superior. The other knights had little choice but to respect his rank. The Pyre Hearts, they conduct the rites in name of their great hero, the Under King Ores, while adhering to their strict code. This knight might have not failed quite so miserably at the Battle of the Spirum Sanctum had his entire regiment not turned in disarray after Sir Deluge fled. Perhaps by confronting his former commander, this knight's own honor may be regained in part. For now, however, th this knight must beg your leave. You say goodnight to Sir Gilman in turn. There is no time to make flight preparations now, though in the morning you will press on once again. You can tell something is troubling, Edwin, from the moment you approach. Mm. You're not the only one, either. Below Looks like a case of broken heart to me there, reader darling. Trust me on that one. Edwin overhears. It's nothing. I think all the travel is catching up with me, so... You don't make much of a liar, Edwin darling. Now then, let's have her name. Or is. That obvious, is it? That obvious. Now go on. Edwin hesitates a while, then... Her name was Ficani. Huh? Ficani? Well, that's a harp name. Yes, she's from the mountains, same as you. You don't mean Ficani Shang, do you? Fared her lost in the gorge. Quarry? What? You know her? Come on, Hedwin. How many of us harps do you think there are? Your Kamoth has been rather successful scouring my people from our world. But yes, Ficani Shang and I had spent some time together in the past. On a few sorties now and then. We were in different units though. She was reconnaissance, if I recall. She said as much to me. 
But what happened to her? When you were sentenced, it was about a year after me, wasn't it? So, maybe... She was alive and well when I last saw her. Got back from the gorge with a few scrapes and some good information. Granted, that was several years ago. Who knows what could have happened since then. Though I must say, she never mentioned you. I'm impressed she managed to keep secret your relationship. She could have gotten herself into some real trouble. You keep her secret too, please. Oh, don't worry about me. Down here and I'm in no position to pray any more of my people, and besides, I like Fikani. You're not bad either. Why, this is rather sweet. Edwin just stares at her. I'm sorry, Edwin. I, I wasn't trying to make light. I wish that I could tell you more about her, though I think that you must know her better than I do. Yeah. Look, I I'm sorry too. I, I didn't mean to get you on your case about it. It's just... I don't like to talk about it much. It's a lot to have to explain. I understand completely. So then... Now that the awkward introductions are out of the way, could you tell me any more about what she was like? Well, let's see. They continued talking for some time about Fikani and how such a relationship would have been seen in both the Hiring Remnants and the Commonwealth. For Hedwin, just knowing that Fikani still lives, or at least that she was still alive after his exile, lifts his spirits. Anyhow, if you get out of here, or I get out of here, we'll have to seek her out. If I go first, I'll let her know you're in one piece, and... Thinking of her still. Thanks, Pamitha. That means a lot. Don't mention it. As the conversation winds down, they bid you and each other good evening and go their separate ways. That's nice. That, that seems nice. Right, um, so we can't use Bertrude for the next fight. Which means I'm probably gonna end up probably using Hedwin again, despite everything. Maybe... If we can afford it, maybe re Ray and Gilman. I want to get as many people up above level four if I can. And Ray, uh, Ray needs some work. Okay. It's flight time again. Where are these? Can I land that? No, I can't. It's one of the other triumvirates. I wish I could talk to them without crashing into them. Hey, one rumbly or now, huh, Nightwings? Think you got our number after last time, huh? Too bad we all got somewhere else to be. Though we temper sure are flattered that you took the time to run into us again. Be seeing you around. <laughs> Why does it keep happening that way, honestly? I'd like to talk to them without ramming into them, but... It is what it is. The forbidding can of Aub lies below. Not many exiles see fit to cross beyond it. It's unfair that the lustrous remains of Shaq's six shoulders shall snatch them up if they attempt to cross. Others simply do not want to pass through the flagging hands. You know its true significance as we do. Although your adversaries, the Pyrards, should be on their way there now. Soon you shall confront them once again. Well, why the land in Shunt or Lixand? This is a Bertrude, but I won't be using her anyway. And Ray, we do intend to use, so I think this is where we land. You touch down in the heart of Jomwe Valley, where first you face the Fates and the Dissidents. You briefly wonder where they might be now and how they fare. Now have a little time before having to set forth by land. No one seems very much inclined to explore the blistering and unrealms here, except for Ray, who is more upbeat even than usual. Environs? Environs? Environs, because en because environment, right? So it should be environ. Yeah, environs. A sacred bath in mud cleanses the mind. Uh, at least I think it does. But come look, come look. <laughs> she draws you by the hand toward one of the muddy pits and jumps right in, laughing. At first you are put off, and yet her joy is infectious. Soon you are in better spirits, as is she. 
You return together to the wagon, where you find yourself with time and motivation to pursue your vocations. Plus two hope. A pleasant day. Vocations time. Uh, I've been doing non-stop mentoring for a while because it feels really good. It's possible that a, a small global bonus would be good as well. It is permanent, but it's only small. It seems pretty tiny. I kind of like mentoring a companion. And why not Ray, right? You teach me more about the rights? You and Ray discuss the meaning of the rights, developing a deeper understanding of this contest, created to determine the worthy from among all those pitted against each other. Well, not a level, but it should mean that she levels up if we win the next one. It was the will of the scribes that we meet together thus, under the stars. I am so grateful to them for having met you all. Indeed. What is her powers anyway? Just like jump and power jump? Yeah, she's basically real good at it. She's quick. She's good. She's like... She plays similarly to Hedwin. But an achievement. Found your calling. Huh? Hey, Ray. Very Ray heavy. Ray seems to be talking to the Black Wagon's walls again. Though this time, something seems to have come over her. Little brother, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? You are unsure whether to check in with her or leave her be. Let's get her attention. The Ray is clearly capable of surviving on her own. You do worry for her. And in this case, make an attempt to reach out to her. Oh, um, hi, mister. I don't think I saw you there just now. And so my little brother here and I, we were just talking for a little while. Well, I was the one doing the talking. My little brother, he's just a wagon waltz, so he cannot respond. He can't respond, but he can listen, and he listens really well. Um, now I'd like to get back to my conversation here with him, if you don't mind. And you're welcome to stay, though, if you like. Seems Ray is doing all right after all. Okay, she did invite me to stay, so... You decide to take Ray up on her invitation and keep listening to her conversation with the wagon wall. Her little brother, as she calls it. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, I remember. It's that they always said that there was something wrong with me, but they wouldn't really tell me what. They just... They said that I was moon-touched, but so what? So, then the scribes, they call me here. They are the ones who brought me here, not those... Those people. They were so cruel. They were always so cruel. I didn't have a little brother at the time. No one that I recall, really. Although, so much of it back then... I can't tell how much of it I, I dreamt. Most of it? I didn't want it to be true. But I remember that they threw me out. They decided they would throw me out. And let the scribes take care of me, they said. The scribes, they would take care of me. It was so very quiet here, and I was all alone again. Although, I think I liked it more. Being alone down here, than being alone back there. Everybody's alone down here, so it makes me feel less alone, somehow. Back there, why I would sometimes see families, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers. But here, there's hardly anyone at all. But I knew that I was closer to the scribes. I knew that they were in the sky, above. And I did search for them up there, you know? And then one night I found them. I saw the stars and they were falling to the ground and I thought, why is it the scribes themselves are crying? Are they sad and... Maybe, are they sad for me? Well, that was when I first saw you, little brother. With your help, I would get close to the scribes. That way, maybe they could answer all my questions, don't you think? But I'm sorry, very glad I found you and the others. I'm finally not alone. I'm finally not alone, and more importantly, I think, sometimes I even feel that way, that I'm not alone. Maybe, as we get closer, maybe... I will get to feel that way more often, being here or being anywhere with you and all my friends. She falls silent. Though you were concerned for her at first, you sense that now she is at peace. She wanders off, faintly smiling. You sense you have a better understanding of her now. Oh man, Ray! A special child left abandoned. 
but she possessed a strange affinity for the old ways. Oh man, she was she didn't even really do anything. She was just cast into exile. I feel like I I can't. It's one of the things where I don't really want to liberate her just yet. Because that'll be just sending her back alone. At least here she's with us, you know. Well, it's time to try her out in a right.